Hi everybody, thanks for joining this month's video that accompanies the Geospatial Tip of the Month article. Now that you've read my recommendation on the best computer for the geospatial industry, or at least from my perspective, which is a MacBook Pro, let's take a few minutes and take a look at some of the programs I talked about in the, in the article that are a must-have for me. The first one I'm going to show you is a program called Xnote. It's an add-on for Thunderbird, which I use instead of Outlook for my email client. And what Xnote does is it lets you put little sticky notes or post-its on top of an email so that every time you open it, you can see this note and have a little reminder to, for an action. It's a very simple program. Once installed, you right-click, you go to Xnote, create a note, and it lets you create a reminder here. So next time you email, be sure to remind about high-res data. So these notes are persistent and they're sticky. And what's also nice about them is they create a folder, a custom folder that you can store anywhere. I store it in my folder, my Dropbox folder. And you can see here a ton of little X notes, rather randomly named, but obviously that's a system that the system recognizes itself. Um, the nice thing about Dropbox, now that's gonna bring us into our second uh, program that I'm gonna share with you this month, is that Dropbox is a file sharing program it's a cloud-based file sharing program that stores your data on the cloud, also on your hard drive, and lets you sync it to a number of different devices you might have. So if you have a home laptop or home desktop and a work laptop and you want to share files amongst them and dynamically update them as you're saving and working with the file, Dropbox is an awesome solution for you. Um, couldn't live without it. And then another really great function of Dropbox is that it stores previous versions for you. So if you ever make a mistake and you delete a file or you change something that you didn't mean to change, what you can do is I'm on my Dropbox folder online and you can go to the file you're looking at and you can right click on it and you go down to previous versions here and what you'll see is it's gonna load a long list of different versions that it's stored and you can go all the way back. It's got 11 pages of these things and what it does is it actually lets you go back and let's just go down here to version one, the oldest one it has and it lets you open it and you can see in here, this is the original file itself. And if you really want to, you can also uh, restore it to that oldest version. Just be careful you do that um, when you do that, as you might eliminate something that you uh, meant to, to keep if you didn't save that file before you did that. So um, that's Dropbox, another really great program. So a program that I found a little bit ago um, is a program called CatMouse. Uh, it's a little lightweight program that you install in Windows 7 and I believe it works in XP as well. If you go in here, this is the little cat mouse uh, function or the, the, the icon. It gives you a bunch of different settings that you can enable. Um, i am already got it all set up, but I just want to show you how it works. So if you have a window open, let's say you're working in an arc map and you're copying some information over here and you want to scroll down the page, well you don't have to have that page active as you can see this is the active window, excuse me. This is the active window, this is inactive, but I'm still able to scroll up and down. So that's cat mouse, a little fun tool. Now let's drop into ArcGIS, one of my favorite programs, and show you the functionality of ET Geo Wizards, one of those can't live without programs. Um, you're gonna see a little bit of some funky text sizes going on here, something I haven't been able to solve yet. It's related to the screen DPI issue that you noticed in my article. But when you click on ET Geo Wizards, I'm gonna show you the split by attributes function. Here I have a file of Denver Metro zip codes loaded. And what I'd like to do is create a individual shape file from this big cluster. And each shape file would obviously be a single zip code. So if you go into split by attributes, you're able to select the layer you want. And then you have different uh, fields you can split it on. I'm gonna split it on the zip code itself. And then you specify where you wanna save it. So I'm just gonna create a, a new folder called split. And then we can go ahead and load them. And then a nice little function is if you wanna change the prefix, it's gonna add this on to every file it has along with a zip code name. You can do that. I'm just gonna leave it by default. You press finish, it takes a couple seconds. And here we go. It's loading all these files instantly for us, creating a bunch of different shape files that would have taken us quite some time to do if we would have done it manually. So that's ET Geo Wizards, everybody, and just show you the output from that. Go to our desktop, and you can see here 
it's created all these shapefiles with PRJs and everything you would need to use this in future applications. And as a final test or a final show and tell in this, this uh, GTM, let's go and take a look at the custom and custom scaling and XP DPI settings and how you access those. I'm running, Win I'm running Windows 7 Pro, not gonna be the same for everybody. I'm sure if you're using a different operating system, it's a Windows base, you can figure this out um, with internet searches but I'll just show you how it works for me. You right click, you go to screen resolution, and then I click on display, and it gives me different choices here on the left. I'm gonna go to custom, set custom DPI size. So this is where, if you really want to, you can slide this bar back and forth and create really large or really small views. You know, I, I settled on 150% DPI. I thought that looks nice. Um, you turn on this use XPI DP scaling, and what this does is it creates a nice tight view. Um, that's what you've seen when you were looking at my screen um, already in ArcGIS here. This is using that, that DPI scaling. So what I'm gonna show you here is what happens when you actually turn this off and you run the software. So in the second part of this video, it's what it's gonna do is when I, when I activate this, um, it's gonna make me log on and log off. So I'm going to do that now, and when you see me in the second part of this video, um, we'll talk about, or I'll show you what happens when uh, you switch that over. Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of this video. This will be pretty short here. Last I left you, I showed you turning off the XPI DPI scaling, which is something I really like to use. It creates a nice, sharp, crisp image. Granted, things are quite small at times. Um, I tend to have them small and sharp rather than uh, big, blurry, and fuzzy looking. So let me show you what that actually looks like. If you remember last time I looked at ArcGIS, I had the same program loaded, and what you can see is these icons up here are much, much bigger, much fuzzier, the text is larger. Um, but you know, for some people, some visions, that might be a preferred way of looking at things. One thing I will tell you is a weird uh, quirk is that if you go into these toolbars, what you're gonna see um, is that they're still quite small and they're also offset, making it rather hard to uh, work with them. So. I don't really suggest using this mode, that's, that's up to you. Um, another thing I'll show you is the compatibility scaling that I talked about in the article. And what you can do there is you go to your uh, tray bar and you right click on the properties itself. And you right click on the icon itself and you go to properties and you go into compatibility from this menu and you can turn on disable high DPI settings, which is similar to doing this um, changing your entire or turning off XP DPI scaling is similar to pressing this. Um, you know, I don't, again, use this ever just because it creates a fuzzy appearance and that's not something I'm a fan of. So hopefully we learned something along the way on this, uh, this GTM of the month. And if you have uh, any questions for me, please let me know.